the Gandhara civilization thrived in what is now northern Pakistan and Afghanistan from the middle of the first millennium BCE to the beginning of the second millennium CE. Despite being ruled by multiple major powers over time, the region shared a deep reverence for Buddhism and embraced the Indo-Greek artistic tradition that developed after Alexander the Great's invasions into India. And Gandhara is mentioned in historical sources as far back as the reign of the Achaemenid king Cyrus the Great. However, its geographic details were not well known until the Buddhist monk Xuanzang visited the region in the 7th century CE. He provided a detailed account of the area and its cities during his pilgrimage, which has helped modern researchers identify Gandharan remains. Gandhara was likely a triangular region about 100 kilometers east to west and 70 kilometers north to south, primarily west of the Indus River and bounded to the north by the Hindu Kush mountains. The core of Gandhara included the Peshawar Valley and the hills of Swat, Deer, Bunner, and Bajawar, all within northern Pakistan. Greater Gandhara's influence extended to the Kabul Valley in Afghanistan and the Patwar Plateau in Punjab, Pakistan. At times, its cultural reach spread as far as Sindh, where remains of a stupa and Buddhist city are found atop the older ruins of Mahenjo-daro. Notable cities of Gandhara include Takshasila, Purushapura, and Pushkalavadi, where archaeological remains continue to be discovered. And the name Gandhara may have several meanings. One theory suggests it comes from the words Khan slash Gond, meaning fragrance, and Har, meaning lands, thus translating to land of fragrance. Another theory posits that Khan slash Gond evolved from Kun, meaning well or pool of water. This theory is supported by the presence of place names associated with water, like Gond Al or Gond Ab means pool of water and Gond Dairy means water mound. Names like Tashkand and Yarkand also support this idea. The Peshawar Valley, known for its good drainage during the rainy season, would have resembled a landscape dotted with lakes, supporting the Land of the Lakes theory. And Gandhara was briefly under the control of the Achaemenid Empire, but didn't stay long as a direct possession. It was a tributary state, known as the Satrapy, and later paid homage to Alexander the Great, who eventually conquered it along with the rest of the Achaemenid Empire. The Achaemenid influence in Gandhara lasted from the 6th century BCE until 327 BCE. Alexander used Gandhara as a passage to enter Punjab and was offered an alliance by the ruler of Tuxila, Raja Ampi, against Raja Porus, a persistent adversary. This led to the famous Battle of Hydaspes, marking one of Alexander's significant victories in India. However, Alexander's time in the region was brief, as he ventured south along the Indus River, crossed into Gdrosia, modern-day Balochistan, and eventually moved into Persia, where he met his end. Alexander left behind significant Greek populations in the regions he conquered, including Gandhara. These Greeks, including craftsmen and soldiers, were encouraged to integrate with the local populations, creating a blend of Greek and local cultures. After Alexander's death in 323 BCE, many of his occupying forces returned home, but those who stayed behind began to assimilate, becoming more Indian than Greek over time. By 316 BCE, King Chandragupta of Magadha had conquered the Indus Valley, annexing Gandhara and making Tuxila a provincial capital of the newly formed Mauryan Empire. Chandragupta's son, Bindasara, and grandson, Ashoka, continued his legacy. Ashoka, a former governor of Tuxila, became renowned for spreading Buddhism. He built numerous monasteries and propagated his Dharm across the subcontinent. One notable monastery was the Dharmarojika, located east of the Tamar River in Tuxila, famous for its stupa where Ashoka is said to have buried several relics of Buddha. Other contemporary stupas included those at Mankiala and Sanchi. And in 184 BCE, the Greeks from Bactria, modern-day North Afghanistan, invaded Gandhara again under King Demetrius. He established a new city on the opposite bank of the river from Burr Mound, known today as Sirkap which was built according to the Hippodamian plan, following a gridiron pattern. The kingdom of Demetrius included Gandhara, Arrakasiya, modern-day Kandahar in Afghanistan, the Punjab, and part of the Ganges Valley. This society was multi-ethnic, with Greeks, Indians, Bactrians, and Western Iranians living together. Evidence of this cultural melting pot can be found in 2nd century BCE Tuxila, such as the Zoroastrian sanctuary at Jandial, just north of Sirkap. 
Around 110 BCE, the nomadic Scythians from Central Asia began their gradual conquest of the Punjab region. These tribes, known for their nomadic lifestyle, had previously been kept at bay by the Achaemenid Empire. However, they eventually settled in Drangiana, modern-day Sistan in Iran, and made their move into Punjab through the southern Indus Valley, eventually seizing control of Tuxila. In the early 1st century CE, the Parthians entered the scene, asserting their dominance over the Greek kingdoms in Gandhara and Punjab. One notable Parthian leader, Gondophares, is said to have been baptized by the Apostle Thomas, a claim that, while seemingly improbable, cannot be entirely dismissed considering Tuxila's diverse religious landscape. Around the 1st century CE, the Kushans, a tribe from Central Asia and Afghanistan, migrated to Gandhara and established their power base in Peshawar. They later expanded eastward, forming the Kushan Empire, which lasted until the 3rd century CE. By 80 CE, the Kushans had ousted the Scytho Parthians from Gandhara and established Sursuk as the new center of power. This period marked the zenith of Gandhara's art, architecture, and culture, attracting pilgrims from as far as Central Asia and China. During the Kushan era, Tuxila flourished as a hub of Buddhist activity. The Greek philosopher Apollonius of Tiana visited Tuxila and marveled at its size, comparing it to the ancient city of Nineveh. Descriptions of Tuxila from this time portray a bustling city with narrow streets and subterranean chambers, reminiscent of Athens. However, the latter part of the Kushan rule was marked by instability, with various dynasties vying for control of Gandhara. Successive invasions by the Sasanian Empire, Kidarites, or Little Kushans, and the White Huns plunged the region into turmoil, disrupting daily life and trade. In 241 CE, the Sasanians annexed Gandhara, but they struggled to maintain direct control due to pressure from the northwest. Eventually, control fell to the descendants of the Kushans, known as the Kidarites or Little Kushans. By the middle of the 5th century CE, the Kidarites, successors to the Kushans, found themselves facing a new threat, the White Huns, also known as the Hephthalites. These nomadic invaders swept into the region, bringing destruction in their wake. As Buddhism was already in decline in Gandhara, the Huns' arrival hastened its demise as they embraced the Shaivite faith favoring Hinduism over Buddhism. During the White Hun invasions, the religious landscape of Gandhara underwent a significant transformation. Hinduism gained prominence over Buddhism, as the Huns sought alliances with the Hindu Gupta Empire against the Sasanians. This shift in religious allegiance further contributed to the decline of Gandhara's cultural identity. The alliance between the White Huns and the Gupta Empire had far-reaching consequences for Buddhism in the region. As Hinduism gained dominance, Buddhism gradually receded, with its followers migrating northward through the mountain passes into China and beyond. The once thriving Buddhist culture of Gandhara faded into obscurity, replaced by the influence of Hinduism. Subsequent centuries saw Gandhara subjected to constant invasions from the West, particularly by Muslim conquerors. These invasions further eroded the remnants of Gandhara's ancient culture, pushing it deeper into oblivion. The once great cities and sacred sites of Gandhara slipped from memory, lying forgotten for over 500 years. It wasn't until the mid-19th century CE that the ruins of Gandhara were rediscovered by British colonial explorers. Despite the succession of rulers over the centuries, the cultural heritage of Gandhara remained remarkably consistent. Archaeological evidence attests to the enduring legacy of Gandhara's cultural traditions, with distinct boundaries that can be identified through countless remnants scattered across the region. And Gandharan art blossomed in the first century BCE, encompassing various forms such as painting, sculpture, coins, pottery, and more. However, it truly flourished during the Kushan period, particularly under the reign of King Kanishka in the first century CE. Kanishka's patronage elevated Buddhism, leading to a surge in artistic expression centered around the Buddha. Under Kanishka's rule, the Buddha was deified, and his image became a central focus of Gandharan art. Countless Buddha images, ranging from handheld figurines to monumental statues, adorned chapels, stupas, and monasteries across the region. This period marked a significant revival of Buddhism, echoing the religious fervor seen during the time of Ashoka. Gandharan artists employed various materials, including conjure stone finished with plaster and paint, as well as schist stone. Conjure, a fossilized rock, was molded into shapes for decorative elements, while schist stone was used for larger statues and reliefs. Gold leaf and precious gems adorned select pieces, adding to their splendor. 
The sculptures of the Buddha, crafted with meticulous detail, portrayed him in simple monastic robes with distinct features like the Ushnaisha or top knot atop his head. While these sculptures were originally painted in vibrant colors, most have since faded, leaving behind the natural stone or plaster. Despite variations in style, the Buddha's halo and attire remain consistent, distinguishing him from other figures. Alongside the Buddha, bodhisattvas played a prominent role in Gandharan art. Depicting the Buddha before his enlightenment, bodhisattvas like Avalokitesvara and Maitreya embodied luxury and opulence, adorned with intricate jewelry and elaborate headdresses. Their distinct clothing, postures and mudras set them apart, making them easily recognizable in artistic representations. Gandharan art not only celebrated religious ideals, but also depicted scenes from everyday life, featuring mythological figures, celestial beings, royal figures, musicians, and common people. Through its rich imagery and meticulous craftsmanship, Gandharan art offered a glimpse into the spiritual and cultural heritage of the region and Gandhara's architectural legacy was defined by its multitude of stupas and religious structures, serving as the heart of the region's identity for nearly a millennium. These stupas, revered as sacred sites, housed the remains of Buddhist masters and marked significant events in the Buddha's life. From modest beginnings, they evolved into grand monuments adorned with intricate sculptures and reliefs, showcasing the region's artistic prowess. Initially, stupas featured circular bases and were relatively small in size. However, as Buddhism gained prominence, they underwent elaborate redesigns to enhance the religion's stature and attract more worshippers. Rulers like Ashoka and Kanishka expanded existing stupas, transforming them into architectural marvels. A typical stupa consisted of a circular or square base supporting a cylindrical drum, topped by a dome. Visitors would ascend steps to circumambulate the stupa clockwise along a processional path, enclosed by a railing. The stupa's base often featured lion capital pillars, while the dome's summit boasted a harmaka, atop which stood a pillar adorned with parasols of diminishing sizes. Relief panels and friezes adorned the stupas, depicting religious stories and events, reinforcing their sacred significance. Accompanying the stupas were monasteries, providing living quarters for monks. These self-sustaining complexes included refectories, kitchens, cloistered promenades, bathrooms, storerooms, and medical facilities. Rendered in mud plaster and adorned with paintings depicting the Buddha's life, monasteries became integral to Buddhist tradition, receiving patronage from lay people and royalty alike. Beyond religious architecture, Gandhara city showcased a diverse array of civic structures, ranging from organic settlements to meticulously planned cities, markets, palaces, temples and fortifications formed the urban landscape, reflecting the region's rich cultural tapestry. While Buddhism dominated the religious landscape, evidence suggests the coexistence of Jainism, Zoroastrianism, and early Hinduism. Temples dedicated to various deities, including Zoroastrian and Jain temples, adorned Gandhara cities, showcasing the region's cultural diversity. Gandharo's strategic location at the crossroads of India, Persia, and China made it a hub for travelers, traders, and invaders alike. Its prosperity attracted a constant influx of people, contributing to its vibrant urban life and cultural exchange. Despite centuries of decline, Gandharo's artistic treasures remained hidden until the era of British colonial rule, when they were rediscovered in the late 19th and 20th centuries. The legacy of Gandharan architecture continues to fascinate and inspire offering a glimpse into the rich heritage of this ancient civilization.